We're taking a terrible risk. The future of the world depends on what I'm doing. The future of the world depends on the present. So my first question is for you, Dennis. I'm sort of like, all we sort of know of Dr. Dr. Haig at this point is that he is a bad dude. <laughs> like he's, he's doing some sort of medical experiments that we want no part of as, a, as regular people. Um, what yeah. is his deal? <laughs> like what's going on there? Well, like all things in the show, um, it's it's a mystery and it will be revealed later. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's enough that you're scared of him and intrigued. But, um, you know, you have to admit he's 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 kind of um, he's kind of fun. Um, there's elements to his personality which aren't your straight up, you know, um, mustache twisting villain. Um, uh, he's you know, he's in pursuit of knowledge. He's in pursuit of knowing what is happening with the touched. And like everyone in this society, his um, way of going about that is not very nice to those people who are touched. If you think about Lord Masson and the way that he is thinking about how to handle them, even Lavinia Bidlow, uh, as is revealed uh, episode four, I think. Um, anyway, she's not exactly pure in her motives either. Is Hugo Swan pure in his motives? is even Augie pure in his motives. And so at least we know where um, Dr. Haig is coming from. He's coming from a point of view where he thinks the body and the brain are there to be explored and experimented on. And if you die in the process, I'm very sorry. There's, there's plenty of people in London. You know, we can spare a few. Totally overpopulated. <laughs> Culling. Um, I mean, Culling. He's a statist and he's a villain, but also like as an actor, it seems like a pretty meaty role to play. Like being a, a sort of a villain doctor is, you know, it's gotta oh, totally. be satisfying. <laughs> no, it's completely joyous. And and the thing is, there's more to him than that. Um, mm -hmm. There no characters in this piece are simply one thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may not get all the answers now, but it rolls out, which is amazing. Zachary, Dr. Cousins has this incredible power, especially for a doctor, <laughs> right. um, of like being a healer. You know, why do you think or know that he keeps his power such so close to the vest? Like he could, you know, he could be out there healing the world. I think partly because he still doesn't understand the purpose of it. I, he, you know, be, I think it's easy for him to go, well, I've got healing powers now. Out I go into the world and, and show this off. But I think from what he's learned, especially with uh, what's going on with the Malia uh, and everything, is that this is something not to scream about, especially what's happening against the touched as well within this society here yeah, that, he, you know, it'd be very unwise of him, foolish of him to emit these powers outside of trusted circles. Yeah, so at the moment, he's stuck to doing it in the orphanage and to those that are sympathetic to the touched. Generally, the touched are considered... Um, are, are mostly women, as we see in the show, but there are quite a few men that, that have been touched. Like you have Augie, you have Dr. Cousins. How is that sort of explained? And why do you think that Horatio uh, became one of the touched? I think because Horatio uh, and uh, Horatio has a lot to do and a lot to give. Uh, but because of the color of his skin, he's been treated as less than. And I think that has in itself been the theme of why people have been touched or why they're called the nevers, you know, the, the, they should never be in this part of life where they should, you know, they shouldn't be with us, you know, mm -hmm. and us being the upper echelons of high society. Um, so I think he's touched because of what he can do, but also because of what he has been through. And if we notice, you know, all the characters that have been touched, you know, they've been disenfranchised in some way or some form. I do, yeah. I love that. I, I do love that scene when um, we see the snowflakes, uh, you know, the the magic falling from the sky, and to mm. watch characters and go, "Oh my God, is is it? You know, where is going to hit him? Where is it going to hit him?" Mm. And, and and you know, in that sense, it's it feels random. And do we know if it's random? Is it? Is it preordained? And mm. how do people who are touched think about their own, the accident of the happy accident of getting touched or the unhappy accident of getting touched? That's also something I talked with Laura and Anne about yesterday, just sort of like, oh, so, so, so penance, 
um, you know, she sees electricity and she could see sort of how things work. But like even before she was touched, she was a little handy, you know, like she, so is it like, was she given that power because she could use it? Or was it just like, you know, a happy accident? Mm, Um, Or, you know, could anyone have gotten the power and figured that out or used it in a, in a villainous way, (laughs) you know, like just happened to work out that way. Speaking of, you mentioned others um, and, and sort of people who are considered sort of less than um, Dennis, do you have a sense of why Dr. Haig maybe (laughs) views the nevers or the touched as less than, or is it just like a scientific interest? I, you know, um, Dr. Haig um, has, motivations which are cloaked from uh from your eyes at the moment and (laughs) he he has multiple motivations um one of which however is strictly scientific um if you think about the 19th century and you think about the history of science it it, it's brutal you know the way in which we have we have um progressed in this in this world is by sometimes you know opening up bodies um, you know, I'm gay. In 1950, I would have been lobotomized. Um, that's what happened in America to gay men in the 1950s. They were lobotomized. Um, we still have, you know, we still have uh, camps in America where they try to, you know, cure people from being gay. We have, you know, their indoctrination camps. And so we're not that far removed from science being applied to brutal ends. Um, and we still have execution in the U.S. We still use our science in order to kill people, whether it's, you know, through sodium pentothal, you know, that's what we do now. We don't do the electric chair. We don't do the guillotine. We do this weird, you know, chemical thing, which is brutal. Um, so the history of science has always been one of looking for the good, but sometimes achieving it through pretty awful means. It's not fun watching you throw yourself at danger like you think it's going to propose. Could be fun.